This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Hi, a 45-year-old lady presented with a history of penetrating injury with a stick 15 days back. The eye is inflamed, cornea is edematous. Now this is the sealed corneal wound. The antechamber is extremely shallow, almost flat. The cataractus lens is swollen and there could also be a torn anticapsule and that would be the reason for the swollen lens fibers. On the day of the surgery the pressure is 60 with all topical anti-glaucoma medications and she has been on treatment with topical antibiotics, steroids and anti-glaucoma medications for the last 3 days. And medicines are not going to get the pressure down. The mechanical obstruction needs to be dealt with. and hence surgical intervention is mandatory to save this eye surgery is planned intravenous mannitol and astrazolmet tablet are given preoperatively the iop comes down to 35 time to start the surgery let me take you through all the things that were running in my head and how did i plan for this case i'm expecting a torn anticapsule a swollen lens matter and i'm expecting a soft nucleus as the lady is around 45 years old and of course pc tear is a distinct possibility so i have got my antivitrectomy set up ready the plan is like this make side ports identify the anticapsule by staining it evacuate the swollen lens matter by irrigation aspiration and then take further call on nucleus management based on its density the presence of a pre-existing pc tear can change everything but i am prepared for it While making paracentesis, I'm extremely careful to ensure a very slow decompression as I'm dealing with a tense eye. I'm trying to push in some air. The superior temporal region of the antechamber is very flat and air is refusing to form that part of the chamber. And then the dye is squeezed in. After washing off the dye and pushing in dispersive OVD, the chamber deepens a bit, but the visibility is still not great. The cornea is edematous. This line looks like one of the torn edges of the anticapsule, but I'm not sure where the other edge is. Usually the capsule will be split equator to equator. I go in with my bimanual irrigation aspiration to aspirate out the lens matter. I am unable to aspirate these uh, swollen lens matter easily. Some of these fibers are getting aspirated out, but it does not look good. Usually it should not be a problem to aspirate these swollen fibers easily. I realize there's something fishy. There must be a formed nucleus as well, but apart from that, I was very suspicious now that a pre-existing PC tear with vitreous disturbance could be present which is preventing the free flow of this lens matter since I'm unable to judge the density of the nucleus and also with a strong possibility of an underlying pre-existing PC tear I decide to create a scleral tunnel so that I can manually express out the nucleus the lens matter and then reassess the situation With a Sinsky hook, the soft lens matter is manipulated out of the bag, and then it is expressed out with viscoelastic. Now, with retroillumination, the visibility is a bit better. This line behind the anticapsule could be the posterior capsule tear. As I'm trying to aspirate out the remaining cortex the underlying PC tear is confirmed now there's a sudden deepening of the chamber indicating a probable vitreous prolapse diluted tramsun acetate is used to confirm the prolapse of the vitreous this area with the red glow is the area with the large PC tear vitreous strands are noted to both the wounds the main wound as well as the side port wound So time to do the vitrectomy and using a 23G cutter the prolapse to vitreous in the wounds is first taken care of before introducing the vitrector through the side port and then the anti vitrectomy is begun
again the visibility is very bad to air it i'm just putting some viscoelastic over the cornea it just helps to see things better i'm seeing this thick strand which is collapsing towards the main wound and it is taken care of once i'm sure that the vitreous has been taken care of i switch to ia mode i'm using the aspiration candle itself and the cortex is being aspirated and during this moment repeatedly after some time i would feel that the vitreous would have prolapsed again and again to get to that i would stop aspirating hand piece and switch to my cutter to deal with the prolapsed vitreous and then again switch to cortex mode to aspirate using the cutter itself to aspirate the cortex can be done slightly cumbersome it has a play because it is quite long from the tip and also it's not curved so accessibility becomes a little bit difficult so whenever there is vitreous is not there again i switch back to my aspiration cannula to get access and combination of irrigation alone itself will express out some of the cortex it's important to understand one basic principle the principle is you need to avoid aspirating immediately whenever you suspect that a vitreous fiber has prolapsed out again switching back to vitrectomy to take care of that prolapsed vitreous fiber and once i'm absolutely certain that there's no vitreous now then only the aspiration of the cortex is begun so this is the fundamental principle we cannot aspirate when the vitreous is there it has to be cut first then aspirated after ensuring that there is no vitreous in the surrounding vicinity then only the cortex can be aspirated so this is probably the most important take home message from this video once the vitrectomy is completed i'm satisfied there's no more vitreous i need to trim the capsular edges first i begin by trimming the anterior capsule edge which is quite fibrotic because of inflammation and also some duration has passed and also i would like to trim the posterior capsular tear because the cut edge is coming exactly in the visual axis so just a few cuts to ensure that the posterior capsular margin does not come in the visual axis once i am happy with this time to implant the lens let me freeze the picture for a moment and show you the different landmarks this is the sealed corneal wound these are the two edges representing the torn anterior capsule and this curved line is the posterior capsular tear uh, this is the area where we don't have any posterior capsule and this is the area where pc is intact time to put in the lens i am putting intracameral antibiotic into the anterior chamber as well as behind the posterior capsular tear time to put in ovd placing hpmc in front of the anterior capsule just to create some space and since the incision is large enough i'm using the same foldable hydrophobic multi piece lens but i'm introducing it in an unfolded form once vitreous has been taken care of adequately placing the lens over the anterior capsular flaps is going to be very easy since the eye could be very much inflamed in the post op period i would want to use an peripheral iridectomy to help me out in the event of severe inflammation to minimize pupillary block the superior quadrant the visibility was not great so i'm using the inferior quadrant to do a iridectomy using the cutter itself the iridectomy is slightly larger than what i would have preferred but nevertheless it's functional the vitrector is used to remove the ovd which is behind the lens and probably some of it would have gone into the vitreous cavity the side ports are hydrated The main incision is closed using a tenon nylon suture. It's not necessary to suture the wound because it's a self-sealing sclerocorneal tunnel. But in vitrectomized eye, the eye would be very soft, and hypotony would uh, suck in some of the fluid inside, and there could be a possibility of some risk of infection. So that's the reason I just use a suture to close this. And finally, the conjunctiva is closed with a buried atovicral knot. The side ports are hydrated. That's it. The case is done. these are the first day pictures uh, the cornea is better although it's still steamy the pressures are all right inflammation looks to be not very bad patient has a vision of 624 parts and uh, needless to say she was quite happy because the preoperative counseling of very poor prognosis which was done to her and subsequently she continues to do well and these are pictures about 10 days later
So to conclude, now this was a very tough case. There's a combination of anterocapsular tear, a swollen lens matter and posterocapsular tear, which was not visible at all. The cornea was extremely steamy. And uh, the one of the first clues which I got that the vitreous disturbance could have happened was the difficulty I faced in aspirating this swollen cortex. That was an indirect evidence that something is not right here. It could be inflammatory membranes that itself could make uh, things difficult for these swollen lens fibers to be aspirated. But that should be raising an alarm that we should be aware that there could be a hidden posterior capsule tear with a vitreous prolapse already. It's mandatory to understand this principle that in the presence of a vitreous prolapse, aspiration of the cortex or any lens matter in general is contraindicated. Because when you're trying to aspirate the cortex and in the event, if you're going to tug or pull at the vitreous fibers, invariably the traction is going to be traversing to the vitreous base, causing giant retinal tear. So unless until we do vitrectomy, once we're certain that the area around the posterior capsule is totally free of vitreous, there's a time when we should aim to remove the cortex, not before that. So it could be possible that even during cortex aspiration, some amount of vitreous could still re-prolapse. Again, we need to stop the cortex aspiration, redo the vitrectomy or deal with the prolapse vitreous and then only switch to aspiration mode to uh, remove the cortex. It's important to have a lot of patience when you're doing this surgery. And most importantly, this surgery demonstrates that if you've got a good uh, vitrectomy unit, which is functioning, it really makes this complex case extremely easy. So I keep telling that, you know, the best friend for a cataract surgeon is your vitrectomy unit because it really helps you in such tough situations. Once the vitrectomy is done, the eye behaves in a very predictable way. Rest of the steps are routine, cortex aspiration and implanting the lens. So that was it for this case. Thank you for watching and hope you found this helpful.